Hello and welcome to episode 10 of the Survival Handbook. Today I'm teaching you how to break the overwhelming cycle of death that consumes so many players in this game. This is the last video in the early game section of this video series and I wanted to congratulate you for making it this far. By the time this video is done, I hope that the videos in the early game section have helped many of you overcome the struggles of starting out on the arc. The next videos in this series will be all about mid-game, so if you like learning how to grow your skills and all sorts of other arc related stuff, subscribe now so you don't miss anything. Death is always lurking, patiently waiting to give you a quick, cold kiss that'll leave your still warm body writhing on the ground, loot forsaken and left in a dangerous environment. The cold kiss of death is usually entirely avoidable though if you're thinking ahead and planning for dangerous situations. There are some general rules of thumb you need to follow as you adventure, and if you keep these rules of thumb in the back of your mind, you should be able to either cheat death for longer or recover from death more easily, since of course, death is inevitable. Know your dinos. You need to know which dinos are aggressive, which are passive, and which will attack you if you begin to engage in combat with them. This information will provide you with the answers you need in order to travel properly throughout the arc, especially if you're on foot. How many times have you just started out and are trying to make it across a beach or forest only to run into raptors, rexes, thylas, and theries? These creatures are almost always death sentences for new players if they don't spot them quickly enough to run away before the dino becomes aggressive and attacks. It's important to learn what creatures inhabit a certain map too, because you might need some really important information about them without even knowing. For example, the Enforcers on Extinction allow you to deal extra damage to corrupted dinos in the wasteland. Additionally, corrupted dinos can't be tamed, which is extremely useful to know so you don't spend three hours trying to tame a corrupted rex. Traveling on foot on any map is tremendously dangerous without the proper gear, so taming some of the same dinos that have been killing you is an incredibly useful way to survive longer. Know what you can outrun. This one is usually something new players learn the hard way and will discover quickly that there are many creatures that are very fast and capable of ending your whole career in a matter of seconds. Like gigas are hella fast and if you don't have the movement speed to outrun one you're gonna make an easy dinner for one of the most feared creatures in the game. I'll be honest, the base movement speed of 100% is pretty slow and you're gonna have a really hard time doing much of anything without boosting it due to the large number of creatures that move much more quickly than you. If you're playing PvP, Movement speed is one of the most important stats you can boost for several reasons. If you're with one of your tribe mates and run into a fast dino, you don't have to be able to outrun the dino, just your other tribe mate. In order to survive in a PvP setting, you must first be able to overcome the difficulties of PvE, and knowing what you can and can't outrun is a really great start to that. Know your environment. It's important to know what dinos spawn where, because there are certainly some areas you'll need to avoid if you don't have a dino to protect you. <clears throat> Redwoods, uh, um, mm, swamps. <laughs> Not only are swamps and redwoods notoriously dangerous environments, there are other areas on specific maps that are dangerous as well. For example, Aberration has the spine, which is full of deadly creatures and is completely irradiated. This is really valuable to know if you're planning on playing on Aberration, but other maps have specific biomes that are only found on that map and will probably be the most dangerous locations there. A lot of this learning can be done through trial and error, but it's always a good idea to research a little bit about the map before setting out on a new adventure there. Extinction has the wasteland that's generally pretty hot and causes your hunger bar to drain more quickly than normal. With this knowledge, journeying outside of the central city can be much easier if you bring extra food. The radiation on Aberration can be overcome by making a hazmat suit, and snow biomes can be overcome by crafting fur armor or eating Freya curry. When there's a challenge in front of you, don't be afraid of it. There are mechanics within the game that will allow you to face any challenge. You just have to be brave enough to figure them out. Always have a backup plan. Having a backup plan is really going to save you a lot of trouble during your adventures. Sometimes that means jumping on a flyer and escaping quickly that way. Other times it means simply outrunning the creature. No matter what you're doing on the arc, there can always be something that surprises you and requires you to make a run for it. Understanding that anything can go wrong at any moment will keep you sharp and on your toes. While having an escape plan is always a good idea, another really good idea is to keep backup supplies ready to go in your base. Death is inevitable, and when you plan for it, you can eventually overcome it. At the end of the day, you should want to make death meaningless, and what I mean by that is you should be so ridiculously overprepared that no matter what happens while you're traveling, gathering, fighting, or exploring, you're ready to reset as soon as you get to your base and continue moving forward. This means that even if you lose a dino while you're out and about, you have another dino ready to take its place. 
choice. You have three backup shotguns and five hot bars worth of gear sitting in chests waiting for you to move right along. Backup plans will help you tremendously. Know when a fight is winnable. There are many real life stories of people biting off more than they can chew when it comes to fights. Ark really isn't that different, especially since so many dinos seemingly want nothing more than to kill you, and the other survivors, well, they want more than just to kill you. This means that it's really important to pick your battles and know when it's time to run. Right at the start of the game, you're more than likely going to be running from a lot of creatures and players, and there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, that's probably the smartest thing you can do. There's really no point in trying to take on a Therizinosaurus if all you have is a stone hatchet. At the end of the day, that Therry is just going to shred you and you're going to be all sad because you lost your stuff and it's just going to be a bad time. Sometimes your only option is to stand and fight though. I've noticed that this happens a lot with Trudons and Raptors. Typically if a Raptor is on you before you can see it, it's going to chase you down and kill you while you're running away, so you might as well take the chance to try and kill it first. Trudons are a whole nother story, but I've found it's often smarter to try and fight them than trying to run from them if they've already aggroed on you. Knowing when to fight and when to run will keep you alive longer. Knights are extremely dangerous. I'm sure when I mention nighttime, many of you have flashbacks to that one time a squad of Trudons came out of nowhere and killed you and your tame. Or maybe you ran into a player that concealed themselves very well in the night and you were running around with a torch picking berries? We've all done things like this, and we've all faced the hardships of being out at night. Night is unavoidable, unless you literally turn it off in the settings or decrease its length to mere seconds. So learning what creatures inhabit the night and how to survive is going to help a lot. The main idea I have for you if you do plan on going out at night is to bring a flyer with you. There are a lot of ground dinos that are super nasty and can sneak up on you by using darkness to their advantage. This is equally true for other players. How many of you Mega Tribe members out there literally wait until nighttime to begin an attack? Using a flyer to get around at night will be extremely useful for you since it keeps you off the ground and helps you move more quickly. The absolute best advice I could give you is to try and avoid the night entirely by crafting supplies you'll need for the next day while you wait. Sometimes that's not an option though, so extreme caution is important at night. I hate recommending this to you since it's technically cheating, but you can always just turn the gamma up if you're unofficial and don't want to use a torch to expose yourself. I use this sometimes on stream so you guys can actually see what's going on, but it makes me feel dirty so I don't do it when I'm playing off screen. Best of luck to you brave souls attempting to conquer the night, because once you do, you'll have wild advantages over other players that are still trying to figure it out. If you want to learn more about surviving the Ark, click on the video on the left. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a like if you found this content helpful, and as always, thank you so much for your time today. We'll see you in the next video.